Okay, focus on the middle of the blurry image and try to stare at it without blinking. After some time, you'll notice that the picture starts to fade away. This visual illusion is called the Troxler effect, or Troxler fading. Its main idea is that your neurons stop reacting to the stimuli that remain unchanged over a period of time. In this case, it's the blurry picture in the background. This results in the image disappearing from your consciousness. Look at these two tables. Are they different in shape and size? Most people will answer that they are. But in fact, they're exactly the same. Here, you can make sure yourself. You perceive the tables differently because your mind can't but make a 3D model out of the 2D picture. And then, it's all about perspective foreshortening. That's the visual effect when an object appears shorter than it is when it's angled towards you. Look at the white spot in the middle of the red circle. The longer you stare at it, the better. Soon after you start, you'll notice a thin ring of light. It'll surround the edges of the circle. Keep looking for some more time. Remember to keep your head perfectly still. After that, slowly move your head backward. Your eyes should remain glued to the dot at all times. The edges of the circle will soon start to glow bright cyan. If you continue to move your head back, the color will become brighter and brighter. The coolest thing about this illusion is that the ultra cyan you see isn't in your monitor's color palette. Concentrate on the cross in the middle of this moving image and look at it for a half a minute or so. You'll begin to see a green spot running around the circle. It seems to be erasing the magenta dots from the gray background. But once you move your eyes, the magenta spots are all there again. This phenomenon is also known as the lilac chaser illusion. Tile A on the checkerboard looks way darker than tile B. But if you look at the tiles independently, you can make sure they're actually exactly the same color. This illusion is a perfect example of how your brain uses its previous experience to interpret everything it sees. In the picture, some light is falling onto the surface. And there's also a cylinder that casts a shadow over the dark and light tiles. This fools your mind into believing that tile B is the lightest. When most people see this image, they immediately spot a triangle. It's formed by the three figures. Each of them looks like a pizza with a missing piece. This triangle also looks brighter than the background. In reality, though, there's no triangle, and the whole picture has the same brightness. This optical illusion proves that when a textured object is positioned against a plain background, it seems to be brighter and have more contrast. But if the background is also textured and high contrast, the object becomes less visible. Here, your brain works in a similar way it does when you see something from a distance or through the fog. Then, with a lack of light falling on your retina, your brain can interpret images incorrectly. The same happens with a low-contrast object on a gray background. Now, sit at a comfortable distance away from the screen. Then start to move closer toward the center of the image you'll immediately notice that the white light in the middle expands and becomes brighter. Start moving back and forth. The image will keep changing, becoming dimmer and then lighter again. This phenomenon is known as the breathing light illusion. Look at this image attentively. <laughs> You're likely to say that the black stripe lines up with the blue one. But in fact, the black line is connected with the red one. You see it once the part keeping the lines out of sight becomes transparent. This grid looks nice and even in the middle. Closer to the sides, though, it gets all messed up. But there's a way to fix it. Stare at the center of the grid. After some time, you'll notice that the edges have started to arrange themselves into a more regular pattern. Scientists aren't sure, but it might happen because your brain likes order. That's why it does everything possible to help you see the world in an orderly way. Now look at the black square crisscrossed with white perpendicular lines. The spots where the lines cross change their color from white to gray and back. When you focus on a particular spot, you see that it's white. But as soon as your attention wanders, the spot turns gray. This is called the Herman grid illusion. And now, how about we take it one step further? 
This time, there are white dots placed at the intersection of gray lines. Look at this image attentively. You'll notice black dots that will start to pop up at the intersections. Plus, you're likely to perceive the dots as white at one moment, and then, almost immediately, you'll see them as black. When you look at this image, it may seem to you that the horizontal gray lines are slightly curved, but in reality, they're parallel. This illusion is possible thanks to the high contrast between the two different types of bricks, white and black. When your brain interprets the picture, it stretches dark zones into light ones. That's what causes the warping effect. The image you see is actually not animated. It's hard to believe, but choose a part of the picture and focus on it. You'll see that the dots have stopped moving. The movement you observe is an example of the phenomenon called the peripheral drift illusion. It happens because your brain needs different periods of time to process objects of different brightness. Look at the center of the screen. After several seconds, you'll notice that the flickering circles are moving. But in reality, they stay in one place. If you want some proof, try focusing on one of the circles and you'll see that it's stationary. This illusion is possible because that's how your brain interprets small changes in gradient. While looking at the picture, most people see a semi-transparent cyan circle. It overlays a part of the image. But guess what? There's no blue circle. This illusion is known as neon color spreading. It occurs because your brain gets tricked into adding some non-existent color to the image. In this picture, all the images look like a watercolor painting. But of course, it's just an illusion. There are no real shades here, only lines. This visual phenomenon is called the watercolor illusion. Good name. It occurs when a flat shape has a bright line as its border. An obligatory condition, this bright line should be accompanied by another. This one darker, but of a complementary color. Your brain then automatically fills in the shape with the lighter color. What you see in this picture looks like a spiral disappearing into nowhere, right? Well, not exactly. That's your brain playing tricks on you. Try running your finger along the entire length of the spiral. Easier said than done. That's because the spiral isn't actually a spiral. It's a series of circles that have the same center. That's the Fraser spiral illusion. Because of the background pattern, your brain gets confused, and it ends up supplying you with the wrong information. When asked, you're likely to say that the vertical line is longer than the horizontal one. But they both are actually of the same length. This is a simple optical illusion called the vertical horizontal illusion. The way the vertical line is positioned makes your brain believe that it's further from you. And thus, it must be longer than the horizontal line. In this image, you see two orange circles. Each of them is surrounded by several gray circles. But in the first case, the gray circles are way larger than the orange one. And the second orange circle is accompanied by much smaller gray circles. You can't deny that the right orange circle seems to be bigger, but this is only… right, an illusion. It's based on your perception of relative size. Your brain gets tricked into believing that things are bigger when they're surrounded by smaller objects. What you see on the screen is known as the Necker cube. If you don't have any other visual cues, it's impossible to figure out the cube's true orientation. Sometimes it may seem that its front-facing side points toward the lower left. And in the next moment, you might realize it's oriented toward the top right. Watch the movement of the blue and yellow feet. They seem to step forward one by one. But try not looking at these stripes, but between them. You'll see they're actually moving simultaneously.